And as promised, what I'm going to show you is how to basically build a bar chart, for example, expressing the variance of concern, as you see throughout here, for each country. Now, keep in mind, what I'm going to show you is not really a cheat, but a shortcut. So if you're looking to build a variant of concern table or basically for whatever it is, media organization, so on and so forth, this is a real easy way of doing it. Just utilize nothing more than uh, pandas and Plotly, and you get some great information in which to mine. Let's say, for example, Omnicron. I'm going to click on that. And, for example, you see the Omnicron sequences in South Africa, Botswana, a little bit of Australia, so on and so forth. So you get a really good bearing. Also, as well, too, the variance as we've gone throughout time, throughout the past couple of years. And if you want to break it down by country, let's say, for example, South Africa, how to do that as well. And I'll put all the data in, or I should say the code. It's not even a lot of code in the YouTube channel. At least so you can get a good bearing, so you can use it on your own. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart this kernel. And as we restart this kernel and clear all the outputs, I can explain it as we go along. So let's get this started. Now, the sources. Now, you can traditionally go through GISA. You can register, uh, have your identity confirmed, so on and so forth. Wonderful graphs and charts, a lot of detail, but a pain in order to basically download all the variants of concern, you know, on a weekly basis per se. You know, especially when I look at it historically. However, though, there's a shortcut thanks to our friends at Our World and Data, and they use the GIS aid. You ready? Here we go. So you can register, do the whole thing like this, learn, you'll learn quite a bit. Wonderful thing. But we go to Our World and Data instead. Now you go by topic, go to health, go to coronavirus pandemic, click on your data explorer. All right, you click on that. Wait till it comes up, whatever it is. You don't have to wait for it comes up. All you have to do is scroll down and you'll see our world in data, COVID-19 data sets. I'm gonna move a little slow because there is something that you need to do, which is real important. And don't go for the bait. Are you ready? Here we go. Click our world and data. All right, now, here you have variants, right? Now, the most common thing that we're going to do is click on this and we're going to copy that link. Let me show you what's going to happen when we copy that link. Just to give you an idea. So here we go. You copy that link. We are going to just basically cut and paste it in here. And boom. And for example, just get our parentheses in place. Da da da. And come on, da da da, and here we go. Watch. It's important that I show you this so you see exactly why not to do it. You click on that, and let's get that up. Let's get our modules running. There we go. Do it again. Click on it, and you run into this error. All right. Now you can go and try to fix your errors and things like that. Now you say, all right, let's move move the dates. Let's see what the data frame looks like. So you got to do that too. Ready? And then boom nothing happens for example nay more errors so what we'll do is we're going to put that par states back up and oops get that back let's see and so backwards all right now what you see is this code here so how do we get that code there because this code for example when you click on it works now watch this is what you got to do and this will alleviate, alleviate a lot of frustration. Go to your covariance CSV. Ready? Bypass all the other bait. Click on raw. Copy the link address. Then when you copy the link address, just to show you, I'm going to cut it and paste it just so you see there's no tricks involved here. Keep in mind, look at that raw true thing. We copy it. There it is. Now we run it. Beautiful. Now, what you do is you want to examine your data frame. See, that's what, I don't know why that is. If, for example, if you just click the file here uh, directly, it just, and you just you know, copy the link, it works. You can do here, you can copy your permalink, 
and it's not the same. So if you copy the permalink, let me just take a, a divergence real fast. And you gotta paste that in there since we don't need it anymore. You see, it's just not the same. You won't get you won't get the information as clearly as if you just copy the link to the raw data. So here's our variance. So click on that, that's your data frame. We examine our info. All right. Let's look at Hungary real fast because Hungary is you they'll see as far as that. You see the breakdown as far as the percentage sequences, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, you'll have the updated uh, variants such as Omicron right there. And for example, if you just want to look at Omicron, you click on that like that. And for example, you can then look at places which are greater than zero sequences. You don't want to pulp the entire table. All right, and so you can see, for example, where Omicron has arisen. It's like the, the hate says, it's just like the Transformers. I just, I don't, I, I don't know how they make up these names. All right, so there is Omicron and so on and so forth. And just, just, just to put you at ease, I'll show you how variants rise and fall in South Africa because information is important when you have it in context. All right, here we go. So now we're going to do create two different data frames. Our mix is going to give us uh, basically our data frames for the month. Let's just show you. These are all variants. So this is going to give you variants across the globe, how it goes across. Because you're not going by country. All right, now our VARP. Or is a variance, a variance, or you know, by country. Ready? So we click that. You know, it's the group by function. I'll have the code in YouTube, so don't panic about that. And of course, we want to eliminate all the variants. There's no reason to make a, you know, fill up the data frame with a lot of information with either uh, with a bunch of zeros. So we're only counting on what counts. So we query the percentage of frequencies of frequencies sequences above zero. You want to change the date. Since we're using Plotly here, uh, this is how you get the date to set just between month, day, and year. Otherwise, you will have time printed as well. And that just clogs up the graph. There's that. But besides that, let's look at the head, make sure everything works for it, uh, appropriately. Again, there's our percentages by country. Looks like it's okay so far. Now, when you use Plotly here, I know a lot of people tend to use Matplotlib or use Seaborn. Uh, this is just more graphically appealing, even though, you know, the other ones are just data rich as well. So here we go. We look at the location, percentage sequence, the color will be the variant, and the Hoover data is going to be the variant and the date. Ready? So there we go. And then it begins to print up. And there's the basically the bar chart, which I promised to show you how to do. Because, again, it's very simple. I know you see a lot of things like this. That's why I wanted to print Hungary up. And you go, well, how could Hungary have 200% of the variance because it's just sloppy data collection. And that's why I wanted to show you Hungary. It's just, you know, this this is, I mean, for a pandemic that's spread around the globe, this has been probably some of the worst data collection that you have could have ever imagined. I mean, most of it's been done, thank goodness, for John Hopkins and Oxford University and places like that, and the people at GIS aid. Otherwise, you'd be operating in the dark. Uh, you'd be totally dependent upon your, your news channels for whatever superfluous information in reference to the sky is falling as approaching that day. So again, they give you context to the pandemic. All right, so here it is. So if you want to look at Delta, you go, these are the, these are the Delta variants all across the board. If you want to take Delta off. Yeah, you, know, you want to look at Omicron, and there's Omicron, and what happened to Mu? Remember Mu? Mu is the variant of the day one time. There's Mu. Uh, looks kind of geographical, some aspects. And then you go, well, what happened to Lambda? Lambda was going to destroy the world one day. There was Lambda. And it's really weird because you notice one interesting aspect about variants. Uh, variants, when you look at it, tend to, except for Delta, obviously, uh, tend to have a very strong geographical preference. And, uh, you know, my hypothesis is that can yield, be yielded due to the microbiome of the geography interacting with the, um, the variants themselves. And, you know, there's gamma. Remember, gamma was going to destroy the world at one time? There's gamma. And, um, you know, there's all the variants. Now, here we go. Down the line. Now we want to look at the variants as an average across the globe. We just go mix, date, sequence, variant. And of course, that was from the data frame that we used right there. 
And so here we go. Da da da. There it is. There was the non-World Health Organization ones, and boom. And then there was Alpha that was going up, and then boom. There's Delta. And of course, now the variant of concern, Omicron. All right. And the so, but how does variants tend to grow and fade in South Africa? So we do. We query South Africa, as you see right there. And we build another data frame. Not data frame. We just built another um, line line chart. Ba, ba, ba. and look what happened. So for example, at one time you had others before we actually started identifying them, and then you had beta going all the way up there, then beta crashed, and then look at this, then you had delta going all the way up there, and delta crashed, and then you have, all of a sudden you have this, now you have the Omicron, and you know, so the Decepticons, and they're all going up there, and if it follows the exact same pattern it does in this weavy thing, kind of looks like a, uh, uh, you know, a radio wave, um, you know, diagram. Uh, it's interesting as far as that. But that seems to be a pretty consistent pattern. Doesn't mean it's not going to spread. I mean, obviously, it's always a possibility. But right now, if you look at it right here, it looks like it's only pretty much in Botswana and South Africa. And that's the power of data. And then let's look at something else. And this is from GIS aid. Now I'll just pull up the information right here. This is just to give you an idea on how many variants there were in the month of November. Now, albeit Omicron has you know, grown, but still just the same. Look how many variants, 947 rows, all the co-occurring changes, so on and so forth down the line and basically you know, it's it's just a ton of stuff, you know. But the, what they were looking at is for the variants of concern, the charts themselves, is basically could give you empower you with the ability to extract the information as you see fit. And so, you know, not necessarily to interpret on your own, but at least to have a vision that's beyond what's being given to you. And again, I have all the code there. Very very simple. The main thing you have to do is make sure that you generally pull the information from here and copy that link address as opposed to what we traditionally do is go there. Again, Ralph signing off. Now we have, I showed you how to do the, um, the Dura Vigilance for vaccine reactions from Europe. Showed you how to do the uh, pull up the vaccine uh, reports of vaccine reactions to the CDC. And now I showed you how to pull up the variants. And maybe next time what I'll do is show you how to merge some of the tables so you get some pertinent information, very basic amateurish Python way. All right, I'll catch you all later on, and I'll see you next time. Catch you then. Bye.